Good morning, and thank you for gathering with us online this morning. And let me just say uh, again that if you're if you're choosing to stay at home for now, I uh, continue to miss you, but I understand and I support your decision. I want to remind us all again this morning uh, that we are one church gathered in multiple places, but we're still one body in Christ. Please don't forget that, folks. And please keep praying that the Holy Spirit will fill us, restore us, and indeed transform us. Today's message is about listening, and I, for one, need to listen to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit to transform me and to make me a better person. If you're listening to us online and uh, you're not a member of our church, we are once again grateful that you have joined us. And when you uh, feel safe to come out, we hope you will consider joining us uh, in person uh, for a live worship service. Well, we have a blessing for you this morning. Holly Williams and Jeanette Redmond are going to call us to worship. Let me pray for us. Father, again, thank you for the opportunity to worship. We thank you for every person joining us online. We pray that this service would be a blessing to all of us. Father, we praise you for everyone listening. And Lord, if they're struggling in any way, we ask that you would heal them, restore them completely, O oh God. In fact, Lord, we continue to pray that you would send your Holy Spirit and you would work your restoring, transforming power in our lives. Oh, Lord, heal our land. Take away the virus. Remove injustice. Take away our hatred and violence. And Lord, as believers in Christ, please, please help us see everyone as someone you died for. Lord, we pray for all those lost apart from you. Draw them unto yourself. May they trust in Jesus and know that great hope and salvation that is ours in Jesus. Inspire now the reading and the proclamation of your holy word. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this morning I'm not going to read, uh, have a, a separate scripture reading up front, but I will share various Proverbs as we go through the message. Many, if not most of you, have watched American Idol. Uh, when our daughter Ashley was uh, still living at home, uh, we watched quite a few seasons with her because she really enjoys to sing. 
And like many young girls, she was a, a pretty big fan of Carrie Underwood. And because we live uh, just a little more than an hour away from Garner, North Carolina, we were all fans of Scotty McCreary. But now I gotta tell you, I always had a little trouble watching that show. I never liked the pressure. I, I would actually get nervous for the contestants. It's the same reason that I uh, cannot watch gymnastics or figure skating. I just get nervous. Well, I, I haven't seen American Idol now in several years, but back when we watched, I must admit though to getting a kick out of the early part of the season when they would have the tryouts or the auditions in the various cities. I couldn't believe some of those folks who actually auditioned. I know I'm not a singer, but someone should have told a few of those folks that they weren't singers either. I'm sorry, but either they just hoped to, to get a few minutes on television or they were badly self-deceived regarding their talents. Because I'm pretty sure any objective evaluation beforehand would have told them, don't waste your time on a tryout. But you know what? Self-deception is not limited to American Idol hopefuls. It can be a problem for all of us. We can convince ourselves that we're far better parents or far better children or far better spouses or, or better employees or even better Christians than we actually are. Proverbs says a good deal about self-deception. That's why it says that we should lean not on our own understanding. That's why it says that we should uh, not follow the way that seems right to us. Left to ourselves, we can be deceived and we can go the wrong way. We need a wisdom that sees the world as it really is. You know, we're often told to follow your heart, and I, I think people mean well by that counsel. But the problem is what Jeremiah says in chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? We can deceive ourselves. Therefore, we need counsel and wisdom from outside ourselves. Solomon began Proverbs, folks, by reminding us that wisdom includes listening and obtaining guidance. Proverbs 1 verse 5 says, Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. And then he reminded us that the ultimate Guidance we need comes from the Lord, Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know, a couple weeks ago, we saw how Proverbs warned us uh, about our tongue and about the use of our words. This week, it's going to warn us to listen, to listen first to God's word, but also to the wise counsel of others. In order to avoid self-deception, we must listen. The wise folks are those willing to listen to someone besides themselves. Proverbs 15, verses 31 to 32. The ear that listens to life-giving reproof or rebuke will dwell among the wise. Whoever ignores instruction despises himself. But he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. You know, the wise are willing to admit mistakes, to change behavior and improve their lives. And that requires listening to correction, as painful as that might be. Proverbs 15, 22 says, Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. We need to listen to trusted advisors. We need counsel so we can make good decisions and successful plans. We'll see this more in just a minute, but we need to make sure it's good and wise counsel. And those of us in leadership especially need to seek the counsel of trusted peers and mentors, and even those we might consider subordinates. 
And in seeking those counselors, we need to be careful to not just go to people uh, who will rubber stamp our ideas. The best manager I had in engineering was a man who did not want yes men and women. At the end of the day, he was the boss and he had the final say. And we had to respect his authority. But he wanted us to give him honest feedback instead of just rubber stamping his every idea. Therefore, he was indeed a, a good manager, a good leader, a good listener. Proverbs 12, 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Left to our own, we do not always choose the right path. But we see this in our children. Some children may share a little, but left on their own, most do not naturally share their possessions. It has to be told. If you don't believe that, just put a group of kids in a room with one toy in the middle and you'll find out real quick they don't readily share. They're all going for that toy and they're screaming, mine, mine. Sharing has to be taught. Every mother here can probably tell you that, that generally speaking, children do not naturally clean up their rooms. They have to be taught. Folks, we adults also need to listen to counsel. We need to be taught. And so we ne especially need to hear the counsel of the Word of God. We need His instruction. And it's found in the Bible. Psalm 81 verses 13 to 14 says, Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. I read that passage on April 28th. And here is my journal entry for that day. I wonder, Lord, if this pandemic lingers because we will not listen. We think we have all the answers and we have the might. But the truth is we need to humble ourselves and we need to trust in you, O oh Lord. I still wonder, not that God caused this pandemic, but that God is trying to use this pandemic to get us to listen to him to truly heed his holy word and to live by it and to trust in him. I wonder, I wonder. You know, folks, we all have the tendency to think that we see things rightly. We think our assessment of the situation is the correct one because, well, we think if it wasn't, we'd change our assessment. It's natural for us to think this way because we're broken by sin and I'm one of the world's worst some days. I've arrogantly thought, you know, if everyone would just think like me, this world wouldn't be so messed up. <laughs> yes, it would. Because even on my best days, some of my thinking is messed up. We all need to listen to wise counsel. We need to listen to God's word and consider the counsel of trusted friends. Proverbs 12, 15 again, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Want to be a fool? Then do not listen to anyone but yourself. Be convinced you are the only one who is right. Be convinced that your opinion is the only one that really matters. Want to be wise, then recognize that though you may be smart, though the Lord may have blessed you with an above average IQ, you still need advice, especially from the Word of God. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not liking this sermon very much. However, I hate to tell you there's more. I'm kind of glad that I can't see your expressions 
So go ahead, stick your tongue out at me. I'll never know. But please do not stop listening this morning. You see, the wise listen before they speak, and they listen more than they speak. Proverbs 10, 19 says, When words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Proverbs 17, verses 27 to 28 say, Whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Ouch. Just ouch. No wonder the author of Hebrews tells us that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. For those of us who do a lot of talking, these proverbs are worse than your mama telling you she's disappointed in you. It's a word of warning to those who, who always want to be the first to give our opinion. It's a warning to those of us who are not really listening to the other person in the conversation. Instead, we're just waiting for our opportunity to give our opinion. I am convinced that one of the biggest problems in our world is that everyone is talking and no one is listening, or at least precious few are listening. There's a proverb uh, similar to these biblical proverbs, and this one is attributed to Abraham Lincoln. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and to remove all doubt. Let me repeat that. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. Folks, I may be preaching primarily to Danny here, but listening first protects you and I from impulsive speech. When we're rash with our words, lots of damage can be done. We know this because unfortunately we've all said things we wish we could have taken back. We've all said things that have cut another person deeply and we've regretted saying those things. And in some cases, those rash words have affected our marriage, our children, our friendships, our fellowship here in the church, and in some cases, they even cost people their jobs. Just this week, we've read about how athletes and entertainers have sent out tweets that have got them in a lot of trouble. Listening first can also protect us from having to give our opinion on everything and to do it too quickly and too rashly. Proverbs 18.2 says, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his or her opinion. You know what? I don't need to give my opinion on everything. And even when I do, I need to have listened for a while and I need to better understand the complexity of the subject. I got to ask us this morning, do you have a hard time listening to others? Do you have a hard time engaging in conversations because you're just waiting for that other person to take a breath so you can jump in? Are you convinced your opinion is really better than everyone else's? That your opinion is the only one that really matters? Well, folks, I hate to tell you this, but Proverbs says that this makes you and I foolish. If we want to be wise, we must be slow to speak and quick to listen. And then finally, and I've already alluded to this one to some extent, the wise are careful whose counsel they listen to. Proverbs 12, 5 says, The thoughts of the righteous are just. The counsels of the wicked are deceitful. You know, there are many people who will give us unwise counsel. There are many who will give us deceitful counsel. Deceitful because they'll not tell us the way things really are. 
deceitful because they'll tell us what we want to hear instead of what we need to hear. There are plenty of yes men and women who will go along with you and I. The question for us is this. Do we surround ourselves with people who tell us what we want to hear or people who tell us what we need to hear? Is there anyone in your life who has the freedom to lovingly hold you accountable and at least occasionally tell you no? It's interesting that Solomon pleaded with his sons in Proverbs to seek wise counsel. But at least one of those sons, Rehoboam, did not heed his father's advice. You can read all about, all about it in 1 Kings 12, but let me give a summary this morning. The elders, the same ones who had, who had, who had advised his father Solomon, told Rehoboam to be a servant to the people, to be a servant king. But Rehoboam apparently didn't like that advice. Instead, he sought the advice of his peers. The Bible specifically says he sought the advice of young men who had grown up with him. Sounds suspiciously like yes men to me. But they told him to dominate the people, to work them much harder than did his father Solomon. And Rehoboam took their bad advice because I suspect it was what he wanted to hear. And I got to tell you, it ruined his kingdom. Now, 1 Kings 12 goes on to tell us that, that this was a turn of affairs brought on by the Lord. But still the point is made. Rehoboam did not accept wise counsel. I cannot say it more clearly than God does in Proverbs 14, 7. Leave the presence of a fool, for there you do not meet words of knowledge. And the New Century Version translates it this way. Stay away from fools, because they can't teach you anything. Do you hear that? Stay away from fools because they can't teach you anything. We need wise counsel. And how do you know if a person's counsel is wise or foolish? Well, the best criteria for discerning is the answer to this question. Is this counsel consistent with God's word? Is this counsel consistent with God's word? If someone starts telling you that your situation is the exception to God's word, then you probably should run. Because we all have a tendency to want to follow God's word when it suits us and to think our situation is the one exception. But it is not. So I ask you this morning, do you want to be wise or would you rather be otherwise? If you want to be wise, consider whether you can answer yes to each of these questions. Am I willing to listen to someone besides myself? Do I listen before I speak and listen more than I speak? And then finally, do I listen to wise counsel? Are you wise? Do you listen?
them your hand stronger each day. Show me your ways. Show me your ways that I may walk with you. Show Let's pray together. Father, help us to listen. May we be slow to speak and quick to listen. Heal us of our pride, a pride that thinks our opinion is always best, a pride that keeps us from hearing you. Lord, surround us with good counselors. Surround us with men and women who won't just tell us yes. Place those people in our lives who will hold us accountable and even tell us no when necessary. Most of all, we want to hear you, O oh Lord. So come, Holy Spirit, and speak to us. Come, Holy Spirit, and open our ears and Open our minds and open our hearts so that we might hear your instruction. Oh God, make us better listeners. In particular, help us listen more fully to you and your holy word. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace today and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, church. Bye.